easily one of the most influential guitarists of this generation, Tim Henson. No one has more covers, clones, or fanboys than Tim Henson. And it's no shocker. The clean pretty boy aesthetic paired with the flashy guitar playing apparently works really well. In fact, it's worked so well that Tim is practically worshipped across the internet. You'd think he was an actual religious idol the way his followers praise him. Now, Polyphia's been around for quite some time, with their earliest release being the Resurrect album that came out in 2012. And my first introduction to the band was in 2015, roughly a year after their Muse project and a year before their debut album, Renaissance. For me, it's one of the only bands where I'm familiar with the entire discography. So is it safe to say that I enjoy Tim and Polyphia's music? Of course. But before we get into the nitty gritty, I gotta throw out my cookies. Tim is an incredible, incredible guitarist. And what he and Polyphia have been able to accomplish throughout the last few years is nothing short of remarkable. So hats off to them. And whether you love or hate Tim Henson, He's absolutely killing the game. You want guitar proficiency? Tim has it. You want technicality? Tim has it. You want a composition with thousands of notes to satisfy your short attention span? Tim has it. In regards to his guitar playing, it's textbook. He's an extraordinary guitar player who's capable of both playing guitar really well and composing captivating music. However, does that mean everything Tim makes is gold? Certainly not. But before we dive into that, let's address the elephant in the room. Tim Henson alone has released three signature guitars with Ibanez within a five year span. Four if you count the custom guitars that they use for the Neurotica video. Considering how impressive one signature guitar is for a lifetime, three is a lot. And I wouldn't be surprised if he has more coming. 2018 was the THB B10 and 2022 was the TOD10, both of these designs being derived from Ibanez AZ models. And then his most recent signature, the 2023 TOD10N, which is the nylon acoustic electric guitar. What's worth mentioning is that these aren't guitars that Ibanez is just mass producing and slapping Tim's name on. Tim himself has played a big role in the development of each guitar. This is likely because Ibanez understands that in order for Tim Henson's guitars to sell in the market, Tim Henson needs to be seen playing the guitars and not just play them he needs to love them completely custom to what i like a little bit of everything but what i'm saying is polyphia as well as tim specifically are pretty much cash cows for Ibanez. Between Ibanez's biggest endorsers, Ichika, Marcin, Yvette, none of them come close to cranking out the numbers that Tim Henson does. And this isn't a bad thing at all, but when you're seen as an asset to this degree, you're inevitably going to end up sacrificing the happiness of some of your audience in order to make the people above you happy. And in case you think I'm just pulling this stuff out of a hat, Tosin Abasi from Animals as Leaders left Ibanez to create his own company due to the complications he was running into while while trying to craft his signature guitar. Of course, Tosin's endeavors were a different case, but I'm mentioning it to show the contrast and how determined Ibanez is to push out any guitars or products related to Polyphia and Tim. Now, let's talk about Tim's guitar playing. Objectively speaking, it is good. His productions are polished and he incorporates some pretty exciting elements into his tracks. But here's the thing, for such a skilled guitarist who's capable of making such memorable music, I don't see why he doesn't just focus on doing that. I have no doubt that if Tim and Polyphia wanted to release a project for the people that specifically loved their melodic guitar work, they could. But it's as if they're trying to get as far away from making guitar music as possible. And maybe Tim just has to make sure the fanboys know who's really at the top. Personally, I enjoy the actual guitar playing over everything else, but maybe that just doesn't work for the mainstream route they're going for. There are some tracks though that have a perfect blend of saucy guitar playing and engaging production. Playing God is exceptional. Ego death chef's kiss and even though the audacity is an impressively put together track i'm not sure when i would ever just casually throw that on and that feeling is consistent across a good portion of their recent songs if you look at the popular tracks on polyphia spotify there's clearly a certain style that their audience really likes they like the tasty guitar playing honestly i'm not even sure if tim's objective is to make genuinely timeless music it's like he cares more about making every track a blend of everything maybe this is just more of a polyphia thing overall but their tracks are becoming more like novelties as in a track that's put out just for the sake of being different because one thing he and Polyphia are good at is integrating original sounds into their music. A few months ago, Tim uploaded this track called Rebirth, which was a demo of him using Apogee's jam interface. As someone who's always eager to hear a new Tim Henson track, I was excited to check it out. Now, I know it wasn't supposed to be a groundbreaking song, but 
as I'm listening to it, I'm thinking, this isn't that good. And I know it was probably something he quickly put together for the collaboration, so it wasn't a big deal. Once I finished the video, I went into the comments because surely there had to be other Polyphia fans that felt the same way I did. And I couldn't have been any further from the truth. Every comment I saw talked about how this track was so perfect and that it was some of Tim's best work. Literally every single one. Straight up, I thought I would finally be able to see Polyphia's audience say something other than this is the best thing ever. But apparently they love everything. Obviously, my taste is going to vary from what the Polyphians think, but it leads me to the last thing that I wanted to mention. Polyphia has some of the most loyal yet obnoxious fans I've ever seen on the internet. I'm convinced some would die for them, which is cool, but as soon as you share any opinion that isn't in line with Polyphia being the gods of music, you're immediately the worst person on the planet. Very rarely do I see them agree to disagree with someone that may not enjoy Polyphia as much as they do. It also doesn't help that I can't get on the internet without seeing several Polyphia covers from people who clearly aren't ready to be playing their songs. Maybe I'm just salty. I do feel like Tim Hinton is raising an army of Tim Juniors that think good music needs to be overly complicated. I can't count the number of guitars that I see on the internet that replicate his exact style, but I'm sure this form of guitar playing is just trendy amongst the teenage demographic. And I think as time progresses, it'll likely fizzle out and people will start realizing that you don't need to fly across the fingerboard all the time in order to be a good guitarist. Although there are several things that I personally can't get behind in terms of Tim's playing, I can certainly say that I'm always excited to listen to anything new he drops. Whether I like it or not, I do know that most of the time it's going to be something engaging. As someone that will listen to Tim and Polyphia's music on repeat, I've come to the conclusion that I am no longer the target audience for Polyphia's music. I am interested to see what this style turns into within the next few years, because there's an entire generation catering heavily to a very niche form of guitar playing. So we'll see. That's my take on Tim Henson, Polyphia, and their fan base. What I stated is simply how I feel, and you don't have to agree. But as always, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys next week.